check. Let me know if I am live. Uh, is it lit? Hey, you guys get to see what, what I see during the show. So I have two monitors and uh, a bunch of things up. And so when I run a demo listen show, I've got the tune, I've got my sound effects, and then normally I don't have a mixer that's this intense, but this is because I wanted to go right into uh, working on a tune. But here it is, right here. Yeah. Dab, dab, dab. There it is. The sweet vocal effects. The It's all there. Mystery, magic gone. Let's get this tune out of here. Okay. So, a lot of people ask me how I run the sound. So I have a RME Babyface interface, which gives me a sweet internal mixer. But basically what it gives me is it gives me like tons of virtual outs and ins. And then uh, I use the sends on FL Studio because if I mute solo over here, it doesn't affect those. And those are sending in and out to stream and Skype and everything. It's crazy. Um, so I'm going to call up the Whittler here in a second. if He's ready. And he should be able to hear everything that I hear. And you guys should hear it. Um, I guess I should just turn this down. Is what I should do. Check, check. We'll see. We'll troubleshoot. Okay. Uh, of course, you'd be at the bottom. So I screen shared last time. Let's try this. Yo. Check, check. I can hear you. Hopefully the screen the stream can hear you. Should be cool. Good. I can hear you loud and clear. Sweet. Let me try a screen share. Uh it's not even that necessary. I can I can see it through the stream, but if it's because I feel like it's gonna start texting on your CPU, but worst case we'll turn it off. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll turn it off if it gets really annoying. Cool. I'm getting a little bit of lag, but I was during the demo listen show too, so it's whatever. Yeah, you need a. We, we'll talk about optimizing your stream soon. You're uh, you're running at a really high rate, which is good but bad also. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing like two hundred meg, two thousand megabytes per second or something. I don't know. Kilobytes. Well, hopefully not megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> gigs. Just throwing 300 gig. gigs per second. <laughs> Good luck watching. <laughs> so this show is being created live as in I didn't really know what this show was going to be. All I knew, and this is, this is how I do everything with my career, is that I want to do something because it sounds fun. So I really want to make a deep tune and I really wanted some expert advice. So I was like, why not just have a show where I make a deep tune live? And I didn't really figure out how to do it. But now that we got the Whittler here, I think the best thing to do is uh, I'm going to ask him a few questions, kind of get a vibe of uh, maybe some of your favorite deep tunes and then like some questions about deep dubstep music. Uh, and then I'm going to try making some of it. And he actually sent me um, a pack of samples. Do I sent you the cheat code sample pack heaven yes. for deep tunes. So, so we're going to, we'll make something. We'll make something. Good. It's going to be a collab because you sent these samples. So air horn, yeah, air horn. Yeah, no, totally. Um, production. Oh, I got to put this in my samples drive. I guess you guys can't probably see this, but I have a, a, I have a separate hard drive for projects, samples, and then other. Uh, and then my, I've got my system disk. But uh, you're going into my from friends samples. Aw. Paste. I actually didn't even uh, unzip them yet, so. <laughs> do you have a from enemies sample folder? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's just stolen. Just. <laughs> I do have a stolen samples folder, which is smart, because if like, you want to mess with something just for research or whatever, it's nice to know that you ripped it off 
you don't later like get in a fight online with somebody and be like, oh wait, no, I did steal that. Totally. Shouts to all you guys for staying tuned. I'm gonna check the stream what it looks like there. Cool. Okay. So um I'm gonna go through these sounds in a second here. But oh, actually, they won't be able to hear it unless I change this. FL has a preview mixer track. I can change that to one. Oh, sick. Hold on, let me try this. We're doing it live. Like it. So you could hear that, right? The gong? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. I think we're good to go. I just got to turn this down. <laughs> Boom. Down, down, down. My voice is down as well. My voice still at a good volume? Uh, for me, it is. Okay, good. I don't know about the stream. They're fine. <laughs> Sweet. Um, before I go through your samples, I just wanted to ask you a few questions. Um, yes. So, normally what I would do, and I have done this a little bit, if, if I'm like getting into a genre and I want to check it out, like I'll go look up a bunch of mixes, um, and if anybody's aspiring to switch genres or learn more about a genre, I would definitely suggest looking up mixes of that genre um, and listening to a bunch of them because it's essentially like a blueprint for the sound as interpreted by a bunch of different people. And if you listen to it, it all kind of meshes together in your head as like one style and it helps you write that kind of thing without like completely ripping someone off. Cause if you hear one good deep tune that you absolutely love and you just listen to it over and over again, and then you make something right after listening to that, it's probably going to sound exactly like that. Um, yeah. Cause you have only one frame of reference. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's, that's just a good trick that I've used forever. Um, especially when making like jump up and stuff. Um, but I like to make tunes from the perspective of a DJ is going to play them because I DJ a lot. And so it's convenient. Um, what kind of arrangement uh, do you prefer or find yourself liking when you're mixing deep tunes? Um, I mean, with the deep tunes, I prefer full intros, meaning for me in dubstep, a full intro is 54 seconds. That's, uh, I think, 32 bars. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, 32 bar intro. Only because uh, I feel like at that point, with more hype tunes, you can go with 16 bars and it not really make a difference. But I feel like if you really want to meld vibes together, the longer the mix, the better. Mm -hmm. um, if anything is above a 32-bar intro, I feel like that's that's too much. That's that's just asking for a, a poor mix in because people are like the DJ is usually expecting something to come in at 16 or 32. Mm -hmm. So I find that my favorite for deep tunes is, is probably 32-bar intros. Um, and whether they have uh, drums or not is is really dependent on the tune, but uh, there definitely has to be something, for me anyway, on the one right away just to get the song queued up because yeah. if I don't have a reference for one, um, then I'm not confident in, in mixing it in fully on headphones because it can get tricky when you're just mixing ambience in. Definitely. I, uh, I don't know. You probably do this too, like a tune that has like a... Uh, intro that sucks for DJing you just kind of make your own or you add hi-hats have you ever done that oh I've had every time push loop sends me a tune I add hi-hats because <laughs> his intros are so dynamic and they're like really wonderful and I'll have the versions without the hi-hats in case I want to drop it from the top or start mm -hmm. a set with it but um, for live DJing a lot of my songs are fixed up so that in the setting I have the best opportunity to mix them properly definitely yeah it's something a lot of people don't realize it's like you know, I come from a jump up background and those intros are really boring usually. Um, but it's usually a super loud hi-hat. Just tss, 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 tss. And it's because when you're mixing live in a super loud club, like you need that. So, you know, when everything's coming in, especially if you're not using yeah. software. So that's good. I will definitely put something on beat one, probably an impact into a faller <laughs> just to be safe. Um, what about um, what about drops? Are you a little more flexible in drops? I think there's I, there's different ways to approach the the drop in kind of a deep tune. Uh, you can do a full build to the the 
33rd bar where you start the tune. You can you can build up to there. But I feel like a lot of time the power and the depth comes from uh, the intro building and cutting away and leaving an open space before the drop. And then that way when the drop comes in, you can start really minimalistically and slowly build from there. Um, mm. So it's not it's not always necessarily every element comes in at the drop like some other songs uh, where the full impact hits. A lot of these tunes, they kind of they build up into minimalism and then in kind of the old dub style a lot of elements are re- removed and then a lot of reverb and delays and things are added and as more things uh come in you start pulling back on the effects and leaving the elements to be in themselves sweet and definitely like just DJs in general prefer drops that go longer than at least 32 bar drops um we were, yeah. last week uh, my buddy sent a tune in and it was a 16 bar drop and it's just like, Ugh, like I want more, you know, as a listener. Let's see. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm writing all these things down so I can look at them later. I might as well ask you the other ones. So something I think that I really like about this genre is depth. Um, depth as in like sort of a visual sort of sense. So totally, yeah. It feels uh, it feels underwatery, kind of. Mm-hmm. And even like, yeah, like uh, um, what are ways that you achieve depth? And I put down verbs, low pass filter, delays, and pans. Like, what do you kind of, what's your kind of go to, or do you find yourself reaching for? I mean, definitely low pass filters on reverbs really help create a sense of ambience. You want what you want on a deeper tune is you want the highs to be dry almost. All the elements that are coming in on the highs, the rim shots and stuff, they have to be really upfront and clear. And then when you layer in your reverbs, you you give it you give it kind of space. I don't know how to really explain it. Maybe a little bit of a pre-delay, but definitely you want to low pass things like delays, like EQs, um you know, I mean, depending on the things, you obviously need some brightness in a track, otherwise it's going to be very dull. But <laughs> yeah. um, it's the brightness comes in, in in sparse hits and stuff, and you rely on the uh, the reverbs and the delays to kind of carry out the uh, the interest, I guess. But um, I definitely like to use a lot of spring delays really subtly, and I think that uh, room delays uh, at a very very small uh, wet to dry ratio can really help kind of just make a sound feel a little bit more real because a lot of samples are actually super dry and if you don't put a little bit of reverb on them um they you can you can tell that they're almost in an artificial place Mm -hmm. i definitely do that a lot for um sometimes on my whole drum kit i'll add a room so it sounds like it's a drum kit recorded in a oh room. yeah on a, on a drum bus i will i will sometimes put a little bit like just a hair of of wet reverb on it because it'll just tie everything together as if you're right like it's coming from the same room i did a little social media posting i forgot to do make sure you guys share the link dropping these knowledge dub plates <laughs> okay um so that's really helpful i totally forgot to grab extra reverbs and delays so we're gonna do it live um no that's fine but we, we can we can work with like plates and stuff okay uh two more questions before we get started um and this might depend but are there certain aux percussions you always end up using like uh those kind of slapsticky kind of sort of things or I'm <laughs> if i'm doing a dub track for sure uh <laughs> things that i usually like fall back on for a deeper tune Definitely like wind, um, that that really builds tension and stuff. And you can use wind as like builds and drops. It's basically it could be white noise, but it's a little less intense and more reverbed and drowned out, uh, distant. I usually I love rim shots for for deep tunes, but sometimes snares do work um, as long as they're not too intense. And I've packed a few different rim shots and snares in there. Sweet. Um, <laughs> Merma Dub said screaming children are great for pads. You just got to remember your I, reverb. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's it's true. You need, there's a lot of reverb happening in the deep dub set, but the key is uh, knowing your decays, knowing how long they should be, and knowing when a reverb should come in and when it's just overlapping with something else. And 
And uh, that's that's kind of where the balance comes in. So it's almost like um, a, a play on on the balance, the the question and answer, but with reverbs and delays. I think I'm I'm finally getting a really good grasp of uh, reverbs and printed reverbs. I was kind of planning to print a lot of the reverbs if I could, so that I could cut them out when exactly when I wanted to. Um, all right, last question. I don't know if this is answerable. Um, what do you hate in deep tunes? And I'm kind of framing that in like, so someone sends you a, a deep tune and if, if you're like, that's not deep or like, man, I hate when everybody does this, they always do this. Is there anything like that that I should avoid? Oh man. Um, I think that the, I ne that's hard. <laughs> I guess it would be poorly chosen drum samples because that that really that kills a deep tune for me okay as long as like like there could be really good bass really cool synth like the atmosphere is awesome but the kick and the snare just sound like somebody's hitting garage band like from their phone it's just <laughs> like it can really kill it for me but um I, I, there's it's it's got to be that yeah that's that's all it it's probably because they're so out there right they're almost melodies you know yeah yeah for sure okay now that I'm thoroughly scared of my sample selection, uh, <laughs> let's, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, chat, let me know if the preview is working, um, that you can hear all the sounds as I click through them. Let's find that pack, let's refresh. Okay, sample packs. Okay, nice. Cool. Are you looking at it in uh, alphabetical order? I'm just I'm loading mine up as well. Um, no, it looks like FL just went nuts and threw them in randomly. That works for me too. <laughs> you should be able to hear them though. Like, did you hear that? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> that's what i'm gonna be lacking is all these like echo effects i don't do that very much that's cool oh is there more to that i bet oh no i i put in that hard snare because like i said sometimes sometimes a deep tune can have that hard snare res makes a lot of really deep stuff, but with like these almost rhythmy, impactful drums. It's crazy. Yeah. So I put that yeah. in there in case we need some more power or something. I'm interested in the hybrid because I was talking to a couple people about what, what rhythm guys and people like me are calling deep right now. It's not actually deep. It's kind of a hybrid. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I can hear the bass line with that already. I have my theories. <laughs> There's a rain stick. Someone in the chat already mentioned that. Yeah, rain sticks and shakers are good. That's cool. Throw that through armor or something. Now, all these synths are, are in reason. So they're usually Thors, Maelstroms, and uh, Subtractors. I have used um, Massive a few times, and I get, I get it to rewire into reason pretty easily, but I'm still new to it. You're a little behind on using Massive. <laughs> yeah no i know everyone's like jumping on the boat to serum and i'm like hey guys have you heard of massive <laughs> it has macros <laughs> did you get that far uh it's kind of is that when you put you drag and drop the lfos or is that it's the it's little corner bottom right thing bottom right corner oh no, yeah i'm not there yet i've played with enough <laughs> presets but i haven't made my own macros I'm mostly interested in these spring reverbs. Those are so dope. I'm gonna throw some of those in there here. 
I gotta find where I can get the chat so I can keep it an eye on it. I've got um a bunch of. I mean, I'm not gonna upload it now because I'm not sure exactly where it is. But I have a bunch of convolution spring reverbs, so they're not super great if you change them. But if you use the the same sample, like you can you can get some pretty good fake springs. I keep forgetting to to try convolution more. Like, what if I took one of these rim snares and threw it in a convolution verb verb? I wonder if that would do something cool. It, I've yeah, I've thrown like weird, like I've thrown a melody into a convolution verb. It ends up just playing it back in like this weird way. It's cool. Like you don't get a really a reverb artifact as much as like a cool delay sampling effect, but it's I don't know. Convolution reverbs are interesting. I don't know if you can hear my cat. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, FL. FL's lagging hard. I might have to... Come on, FL. Like, I can't open my browser right now. There it is! Okay, and I'm gonna grab... Eddie, you, should, yeah. you, can, you can cut off cut off the uh, visuals for Skype. I'm, I'm good with the delay on the stream. Okay. Going blind. That helped. Holy crap. Alright. So, something I've been doing also recently is making... Um, kits because you know i've been making music now for 10 years so and i don't know if you do this whittler um but i'm grouping samples i use together often that are my own samples or like drum kits that i often use and so i'll have um track packs that's actually when i bounce all my tracks to stems i have them all in a setting but like i'll have drum kits here so like we have 2016 future beats kit so essentially i'm making my own sample packs of myself and when you get a yeah, bunch, no, yeah, no, totally. And I have, I have that both. I don't really downsample my own stuff as much as I should. The most I've like sampled my own stuff is actually creating the sample packs for the subscribers and stuff. But mm. I do have a pretty extensive genre sample pack collection where I have like drum and bass jungle. I've got classic hip hop. I have chill out bass resample. Like just all these folders where I've been organizing and and. Every time I find a sound that fits in a certain folder, I'll drag and drop it in there. So it's been collecting for years and years. So I have that kind of thing going on. Definitely. And I, I just started that. So I have style kits is what I call it. So I made a deep dubstep style kit. Um, right now, what I like to put in these kits is stuff that I've at least affected a little bit. So I have a stolen goodies folder here. Um, check out these sounds. This is kind of what I picked out for the, the song. Oh yeah. Sick. All right, I'm gonna Yeah, there are some cool shakers in there. I wanna know what you think of this kick. That kick is is totally workable for a deep track. It's like there's there's the you can you can go for two types of deep tracks, I think, in terms of intensity because a deep track in itself, it's more subtle than, say, like a party or a harder track. Um, so th there's the, I feel like the two different possibilities are you can have a deep tune that's very intense in its uh, in dynamics and volumes. So the, the kick will be as intense as it can be for a deep tune. But then there's the other side where it's almost like cryptic minds where there will be sort of this hip hop kick feel to it. There'll be more of a a depth to it rather than just an EDM kick. So I think that works. That can go both ways. And um, there's there's been times that I've used hip hop kicks for dubstep tracks, but they're they don't feel as loud or intense as some of the other tracks because of that. So it's it's a give and take. It's definitely a style choice, I've noticed, because yeah. I've been trying to use it and like you gotta throw a hi hat at least on some of those kicks in order for it to punch on like a rhythm tune or a tune that's really loud. Totally. But I'm going to try it. I, uh, I've i been doing a lot of like 100% side chaining when the kick hits, which is kind of that like sample or like hip hop kind of vibe. I'm going to try that. Right now, if anybody's wondering, this is Edison. It's the uh, sample manipulator, I guess you could say, for editing samples inside of FL Studio. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these rim snare sounds that the Whittler sent me and I'm cutting them into one shots. Um, so I can just line them up a little easier and manipulate them by themselves. So there's 
two. And I'll clone that guy. Three. Where are you? What do you use um for uh sub base? Uh which synth and reason or my go to is Maelstrom because um it's got two LFOs that I can use on it, so like one for volume, one for pitch. Um it's got an extra envelope and it's also got some really good sign saturation. So for the most part I use Maelstrom. Like I don't I, I haven't used any other one in quite a while. Okay. And do you do, um, you were on the stream when I was, uh, producing with Whitcomb the other day and we were talking about subs. Do you do, um, layered sub or do you just do sine wave? Do you do stacking? Um, you, I mean, for the most part, sine wave, I will compress my sub and I talked about that a bit on that stream. I like to, to do a little bit of compression on the sub because, um, it's almost acting as a saturator, but it's way more gentle. Uh, so in, so if I feel like saturating my sub bass and adding harmonics, that's fine. I don't really need to compress it as much. But if I'm using just a pure sine wave, I'd like to put two to one compression on it. And then I'll pull down the threshold, reduce a couple of decibels, and make sure that it's it's constantly reducing. This shouldn't be jumping around too much if it's a single sine wave. And then uh, I'll just make up the volume again. And it, it just like, it'll it'll cut the top of your curves a little bit and give your sub a little bit more power. Because you want to... You want to maximize the waveform without turning it into a square. Yeah, that's the challenge. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is I uh, have assigned the kick to my kick channel. Uh, before this show, this is uh, essentially what my template looks like every time I open up FL Studio. Um, because I know I'm always going to have these buses. I'm always going to have sidechain. I'm always going to have these sort of drum elements. Over here where my yeah. basses go, here where my melodies go, here are my effects. Uh, so if you don't do templates, really suggest it. It speeds up your workflow a lot. Everything's routed. Um, I decided that my two spring rim snare samples are going to go on this snare plus channel. That means something to me and not to you. And then, uh, so snare is my main snare. Snare plus is anything that I'm going to high pass and put on top of the snare, essentially. Uh, and then this spring rim sample... I'm going to try it on the downbeat, and so I'm going to use it more like an effect. So I have it in my effects section. Let's high pass it even without listening. I don't even care. I'm just going to high pass. Um, the only thing left is to pick an actual snare. I really wanted to do a rim, a good rim shot. Um, let me know if you like any of these. I feel like this one's pretty good. It's usable. Ooh. I think we can make that work with like a verb. Like a platey kind of verb. I'm gonna use that guy. Yeah. I mean for me I always pick samples and depending on how I start working, they may or may not stay. There's times when I've I've built I've like spent twenty five minutes an hour building drums and then I'll move on to the next part and then I'll be like, All right, let's change these drums now. <laughs> it's just it's it's how it it's just how it moves along sometimes. All right. Also, uh, I, I sent you a uh, quick whisper on, on Twitch about something. Oh. I don't have... I do have Twitch chat up. What? Oh, that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right, cool. Actually, it's too late, sucker. Okay. <laughs> All right, the sample needs to come way down. So let's take these out. Let's just add kick snare. I actually don't even know. Um, in listening to some mixes, getting ready for this, something I think that is a draw to these deep tunes is that there isn't, you know, in rhythm, you got one, three, one, three. In drum and bass, you got one, two, one, two, one, two for the faster stuff. I feel like in this deep stuff, the groove is so important that you don't find the same one over and over again. Would you say that's true? I mean, you can you have more leeway with the groove in a deep tune, that's for sure. But I mean, for for me, it comes down to if it's a triplet tune, um, you got to leave space for those triplets to sit. And if it's a straightforward tune, then um, it, it can even be as simple as just having a hi hat or a tambourine or something, a shaker 
on the up, like uh, on the two and the four, I guess. Um, and having the kick and the snare by themselves, just for the the initial impact, it feels like it would be empty, and it is at first. But that's when we would be starting to layer in the sounds, the the different interesting elements that'll fill up the high end for us and and uh, eventually be dubbed out. I'm going to have to use one of your one of your shakers because my shakers are a little too fast, I think. All right, so let's see. Let's level these samples out. So this is just an FL thing. I mix everything to minus six. On the channels, um, leaving my buses full until the later mixing. And I find that if you have everything at minus six uh, at your master, you're going to be hitting about zero. Yeah, things add up. Okay. <laughs> we got like a drum and bass beat. A lot of times too, I should just kill a lot of these these kicks. Uh, when I'm when I'm composing, I'll just have a kick on one, and then I'll leave the snares in there because I don't want the kick to decide what rhythms I make for the the basses. Yeah, no. Even I was gonna just say too. There's more, you have more leeway of leaving out a kick rather than putting in a kick. Um, even pulling out a kick from the one and bringing it in, like right again before the snares is, is a like. You have because I feel like a lot of the groove and the rhythm in a deep tune comes from the sub bass, uh, or it comes from the dubbed elements, um, or both. Yeah, I'm gonna just have one on uh, beat one, and I'm gonna drop it, and then beat one again. Um, let me hear if this even works. Oh man, that that sound is cool, but it stops too soon. So I'm just gonna delay it. <laughs> Yeah, throw like just a quick delay on it. I do. Oh, I hate that. FL doesn't do bars. It's like, oh, the sample's done. They're going to loop again. Um, let's see what these spring reverb snares sound like mixed in. Uh, so they should be on my Snare Plus channel. Yeah. Okay, definitely the other one first. Nice. It's kind of cool. I'm gonna guess you have to be sparing on these because they are. You you'll your uh, ear I mean, is it, gonna it pick depends. it out. It depends. It depends. If if the tune is really minimalistic and you're focusing on the drums and the way the drums progress throughout the track, then it might get repetitive. But if I feel like if you have enough interest on top of it, then people won't be noticing it as much. It's like uh, like something interesting about all production that I find is like when you're producing something and then you listen back to it, you're hearing specific things. And when you're listening to another track that you enjoy, you're also hearing specific things. But those aren't necessarily the things that the producer was hearing while making it. If, if that kind of makes a little bit of sense. It's almost like what you're perceiving about the tune is what you're focusing on and enjoying the most or whatever mm, is yeah, not, yeah. not pleasing to the ear. And sometimes like on a track that's really cool, I'll notice like I'll go back and I'll try to produce something like it. So I'll, I'll load it up into my DAW and try to use it as a reference. And I'll notice, man, these drums are really weak. They're barely pushing through. It's, it's really the synth that gave this the power and stuff. So I think that it can get repetitive when you start a track, but... Well, we can add enough interest for this to be okay. <laughs> I'm going to address this uh, rim. So that very much has its own room sound, uh, especially if somebody has headphones on. You can hear, I, I can see someone's like, I don't know, I, I see like a living room with a patio door open. That's <laughs> what I hear. <laughs> yeah, just gate it off really quick. I think I'm, I'm going to give it a either a slap or a fundamental pop. I haven't decided yet. I guess fundamental pop would be the dubstep thing to do, so maybe I should make it slap. I'm going to distort it and see what happens. I'm going to wave shape it. Watch your ears, everybody. Turn it down. OK. 
Okay. So you said gate it so that it doesn't have that that verb. Oh no no. I was saying the guy that recorded it just like oh. threw gate on it after. I'm sure the <laughs> the raw symbol the raw thing was like his mom being like, Are you hating shit in the living room again? <laughs> Ma, you're ruining my sample. <laughs> You got me the Zoom for Christmas. Let me use it. Okay. <laughs> so let's do a really uh, thin verb here. Less high end. Okay. What do we got? Oops. I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to try to do more composition than sound design because sound design gets a little boring. Um, hey man, do your thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm like enjoying this so far. This is like, I'm working on a track, but my hands are, are free. <laughs> I'm going to put a transient shaper uh, because I want to try to get, it. it's not popping like I want it to. So let's see if this helps. Let's try that. I gave you a uh, tambourine sound. I just listened to it. That would sound good on the um, the up, like the up, I guess the two and the four. Sweet. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Tam, T-A-M-B. Okay, let me navigate. Tam. Oh, if only this was alphabetical. <laughs> There we go. That sounds like a tambourine and like coins. It sounds like a mixture. Yeah, it's a really metallic-y, crunchy sound. I like it though. You're gonna go in hi hat too, and I'm gonna rename you Tam. Oh my goodness, the lag on my computer. Cool. So turn that down, obviously. Let's turn it down here. You're gonna have to sell me on the uh, up upbeat of both two and four, but let's see. I like that. Let's try two and four. I mean, it could start with just the two and then build into the two and the four. That gets a little more head bopping going. I got an idea too. Um, where's my shaker? I'm going to throw mine on the four. So let's see if I can stretch this out so it goes tuck. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to really stretch it. That's cool though. I'm down. I'll, uh, I'll EQ that guy. Some people in the chat are saying uh, you could do like a different one on the four. So... But I guess this is basically what you're doing right now. So, yeah, I'll. Uh, it's always a good idea. It's like that rule of three, whatever. Um, let's high and low pass this guy. Make him a little more subtle. Yeah, thanks for managing the chat because I'm not paying attention. I know. I'm like on Twitch on most of my free time, so I'm like, I live in the chat. <laughs> oh my goodness! There we go. All right, let go. Grab the other side. I'm gonna try something here. Um, so I'm gonna cop clone this, make unique as sample. Crap. Now I'm going to copy the stretching I did. Oh, that's what I should have done. All right, I'm going to resample quick. This is the difference between producing now and producing when I was younger. It's like resampling, that sounds like a pain. 
got it. All right, sound capture captured. Camp. Boom. File. Save. Projects. Crap, where did I save this? Have I even saved this? Oh no, I haven't saved this yet. Save, save. Whew. Whew. That was a close one. And it's gone. No. <laughs> Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna close my door. <laughs> Come here, cat. Come on. Okay, now I can save this sample in that directory. Production. Collabs. Why is it not showing up at top? There it is. Witstalgia. Audios. File management, bro. Shaker printed. All right, I'm back. Just showing off a little file management. <sighs> NBD. Yeah, I, have, I have none of that to show off. <laughs> Besides my sample folders, the rest of my computer is a mess. Collabs, audios. Okay, I did that whole process for this idea. I'm gonna reverse it. <laughs> and put it back on that channel. Get rid of Edison. Okay, probably quieter too. Dang it. Nice, I like that. Yeah? That's yeah, right. I thought that sounded pretty good. That's kinda cool. Yeah, it's like it's like sloppy, but it's not. That's that's where your leeway comes in. Things don't have to be exactly on time. Oh, say it ain't so. All right, I'm a, I'll leave that for now. Sarah flags it. He's he's uh he's a smart guy, I think. Good. I'll put it there too. Oops. I'm going to throw in a sub, too, and just start playing around, because that's going to inform a lot of our choices, I'm sure. Um. That's cool. Um, I was playing around with a synth called... Uh... I'll find it. <laughs> uh, it's a mono synth in Reactor. It's probably called something like Monolith or Monoster. Cor Corat in chat says, uh, "Leave the reverse sample out to create tension." I think that's a that's an okay idea because that's a unique sound. If we if we over use it, if we double yeah, if we double down on it, it could get not as productive. I, uh, I muted it. That's a good idea, because I like the first part, for sure. Uh, Monarch. You heard of Monarch? Woo! And Suspect says that we have to do a double kick on the second part. I, I feel like we'll worry about the kick when, when we figure out what the sub bass is doing, because I think the sub bass should lead, and then the kick should follow um, in, that, in the terms of, of how the shuffle and the, the bounciness begins. Yeah, I or however it goes. You got that sub? Yeah, yeah. It's going through my sub pack. So this is this is Monarch. It's a mono synth. It's emulating analog. I was just messing with it. I think it might be kind of cool. Um, it's got a lot of the upper harmonic there. I wonder if I can roll that off a bit. There's also um, a click. There we go. Still a little click. All right. Um, 
And because it's a monophonic synth, it will never you'll never have the sub crossing over the sub, so that's kind of cool. Got some yeah. glide. Yeah, I usually make sure that all my subs are in uh, like monophonic uh, for the keys because you never want to have two sub notes at the same time. No. Unless unless wow. you're doing one of those drum and bass kind of like. <laughs> Which I will do for sure. Ooh. Yeah, nope. no, I've and I've done those. But <laughs> if you're trying to make a, a hard specific, you don't want to do that unless that's that's the goal. All right, I'm actually going to go with three ask just because I'm I'm wimping out. I know how to use this better. So I'm going to give my sub some attack. I don't know if you do this, so I'll use totally it. Totally do it. Okay. Yeah, so I'll I'll do a little bit like a, of a hold, and then the sustain of the sub will actually be lower than kind of the initial attack. Should I give it some pitch bend, um, at the top? I mean, on an on an envelope, it could be cool, like a almost like a like it would be a kick drum, but not as intense. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna try that. Uh, let's pitch this up so we can hear what's going on. There we go. Woo! It's low. So you do that kind of a drum and bassy dubstepy kind of thing. It gives you some articulation and oomph to your sub. Uh, no, I'm gonna take this not mono. Do you like release on your subs or does it depend? Uh, it depends. Some like I'll put release on subs that are like it's almost like a pulsy sub. Like if I'll be like doom, 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 mm -hmm. then I'll definitely. I'd rather put a release on it and have a quick MIDI note because um, since I am in in unison, uh, in poly, excuse me, since I am in monophonic, like one note at a time, um, even if the release in reason kind of goes too far past uh my next note triggers and it'll cut it off so that's nice um yeah i do like i use release for like kind of pulsy pumping bases but if i need a specific sine wave at a certain length then the attack and decay will be pretty short i'm not good with shuffle but i'm kind of feeling it <laughs> That's kind of a baseline I was thinking about playing with. What do you think of that? I'm digging that for a first hit. That works for me. All right. Let me record that and then I'll mess with it. Kind of what I wanted. Oh, this is going to suck. So. Shuffle is essentially kind of the same as triplet, so I could put it in that grid, I guess. Let's see. Um, I'm I'm gonna respectfully disagree. <laughs> so about shuffle not being shuffle and triplets are are different things. Um, shuffle you're pushing, shuffle and swing you're pushing, um, your middle notes in between your main notes. I don't I don't know anything about music, but you're pushing them closer together. So there's um bigger spaces um in between them and they're the two notes the two notes are closer together and then the spaces in between them get bigger too so it's like okay. if you take a ruler and you shift over the inches and the centimeters to be closer together they'll be closer together and there'll be bigger spaces between them but triplets is they're evenly spaced and they're they're just at a a, a different timing than four four so you every what three every 12 becomes mm -hmm. uh the same as uh eight notes on a quarter quarter notes yeah it's triple it's definitely more mathematical like tuck it to tuck it to tuck to um yeah let me try okay so this is straight on the beat and then i'm gonna move it after i think that's a good way to do it and i have some like groove templates that i could try Because right now it's really square. Mm. 
So let's go off the grid. I like that. That's, I could clone this note and then shift it down. So that goes on G4, RIP. Yeah, definitely need that. I'm, I'm digging that bass line. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously pitched up because you're figuring it out, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've had people like send in tunes on TuneShare where the sub is that high because that's as low as their speakers will go. So, you know, that's their sub bass. In reality, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot more sub bass than that. So let's try to... I'm going to do a little fudging here. So here's a, a sub bass note that comes, like, I don't even know if you'll hear it. Oh, you definitely hear it. Did not go as I wanted. Sure. Cool. Let's mess with that. There's something about the release. I wonder if it's running into itself. I feel like I'm feeling the first two notes, but for some reason, and I should be feeling them in the sub pack, but they disappear. The The lower notes that look like, what is that, an E? or Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why, but either there's a filter on it or I have no idea. It's literally cutting <laughs> out and I'm not feeling it. Maybe it could be a Twitch thing. I don't know what your audio settings are at, but... I don't know. It's being weird. Well, let's put it on its own sub-channel. So all the quarter notes that are on E are going to be their own channel. All the, all the quarter notes are. All the fast ones are going to be on that top channel. Um, because I might give it a different release time. I'm going to turn off the release for now. So then this should legato. I forget what the hotkey for legato is. Edit. Uh, tools. Control L. That, you know, I was going to do that. Oh, son of a. Cool. Please sound good. My only hope. Ah. Are those low notes still gone? I guess I guess it's a Skype thing. I totally forgot that we're on Skype, dude. Um, Let me, I'm going to tune into the stream for one second. I can move it up to G, too, and see if that helps. Oh, no, dude, dude. I just tuned into the stream. It sounds awesome. <laughs> What's it sounds up with awesome. that? It's, it's, it's Skype that has no sub bass, apparently. Like, they must roll it off with a filter. I'm going to just move it up a little yeah. bit. Anyway, let's try, try F -sharp. Yeah, try like F or F sharp at the highest. Don't go higher than that, though. No, yeah, go, dude, I would say go back to F. It sounded really good when I turned it up on the stream for a second. Okay. Yeah, no, that we were good at uh, at E or wherever you were. I'm gonna kind of burn this sub a little bit here. Let's add a octave up and see what happens. What? Oh, because it's two different subs. Well, no, I'm going to do what you do. So you said you, you add compression, right? To kind of saturate a little yeah. bit? Yeah, and compression totally even helps on on subs that come in and out like that. Pulsy subs with compression really help. Okay. Like let's... the compression helps helps the intensity of them because 
on the decays of these bases, you're you're losing a lot of intensity in the decays. So it's like your choice is do I make the decay longer so that my decay feels good and then it's too long and I have to cut it or do I make my decays short and my base isn't as strong. So that's what I do. I make them shorter. Uh, in this case, they're short enough. You don't have to make them shorter. But then I'll throw the compressor on top and it'll really fill out kind of where it starts to decay. It'll keep it at volume just for a couple of milliseconds longer and it, it really maintains uh, a more... A groove that you can feel more. It's more, it's less dynamic, but it's more um, full, I guess. Or yeah, it's it's easier to feel or something. Let's solo this sub. Um, so if you're looking, you can see um, I've got that little attack built in. <laughs> I might make that not happen. No, that's good. I think that. I think that works. Okay, so let's see what kind of compre what compression does to it. I hear it. Yeah, double I mean, hit. from from Mike and I, I can already tell that it's it's becoming more. Uh, I don't know what the word that I'm trying to use is like clear, easy to understand, easy to hear, more comprehensible. This is definitely distorting it a little bit now. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's where the creative choice comes in. Do you want it to be super saturated or do you want it to be clean? And I think with a deep dubstep, it, it can go either way. But if you do decide to start adding um, saturations or harmonics due to compression or distortion, you want to make sure that you either can salvage the low end and EQ it back up, or you want to create a brand new low end and EQ the distorted signal off on the low end because the ratio of, of your root bass note and your harmonic is really important in keeping the right level of volume going on. Because sometimes if your harmonic's too loud, it'll just sit on top of your root note and it'll make it unnoticeable. I feel like that has something to do with the speakers themselves. They're trying to represent that higher harmonic and they can't do that and the full or something. Yeah, no, it's got to be a physics thing for sure. Um, because they're basically, yeah, they're octaves and, and it'll just be double the the movement on the speaker and it's just too much low end and low end frequencies are much bigger obviously than high end frequencies so they take a lot of speaker real estate mm -hmm. so i'm gonna I, I got an idea here um what if we did so it's doing this kind of like you could say this is kind of a happy sort of beat um it's it's could be major or minor oh it is minor um and then on Eight in, I'm gonna switch it up so that those sub hits that are quarter notes are gonna hit down. Oh, I gotta turn slack off. Slack is yelling at me. Okay. So at eight in, we're gonna switch the pattern just a little bit. It's gonna sound like this. Yeah, I'm gonna do something to that sub later, but. Yeah. I have an idea. <laughs> Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. I really want a sub pack someday it, it just it keeps things so accurate and like just just knowing where your sub needs to be is really easy with the sub pack once you have it calibrated just got another idea b section Go back to the original then. Drum fill. <laughs> Drum fill. So something I do for this, I'm sure you guys use this a lot. Let me.
I'm gonna do a reverb snare. So a mixture of kind of like an 80s technique. We're gonna do the gated snare. Right, let's throw a reverb on there. That's not what I want out of that sound. I want that. Oh, this lag, the EQ, there we go. Yeah, when I'm streaming and I start piling uh, reverbs and delays that my <laughs> CPU is like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? <laughs> I'm gonna try to eventually get a dedicated streaming PC, but I have to get a video card for that. And not in my phones at the moment. Yeah, Titan 1080. There we go. Nice. Yeah, this is a this is a good foundation. And that's that's the like the key to a good deep track is have that good foundation and then feel like a lot of the fun creativity parts come on how you dub things on top, be it vocals or synths or basses or you have all this room to just kind of throw stuff over it. I'm sorry, chat. Let's make that fall down. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. See what happens. Um, I was going through sample packs and I found myself on... Where are they? Sample packs. District. Where are they? Um, sample pack labels district dark and dangerous sample pack volume one I don't remember getting this but everything in it is kind of perfect I'm sure I could use that How are we doing, chat? Chat's looking good. We're talking about uh, sub packs and um, uh, some, something about the blood of man. <laughs> so we uh, at Infrasound, did you catch any of uh, uh, that really cool vinyl spinning Asian dude? <laughs> uh, goth trad, yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm trying yeah. to like... I think it'd be really cool to make a deep tune that's almost as evil as some of the stuff that he makes, too. Yeah, his stuff is like, I love hearing people describing it because everyone's like, yo, did you catch Goth Trad? He played this um, um, uh, dark, <laughs> hard, but like slow, but it was like fast, but it was like clean, but it was like dirty. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, it was awesome. And he's like, he's got um, all of his plates pressed out on uh wax alchemy which is in japan so he's like homies with the guy but just like the speed that the guy mixes yeah. like just the way he puts down the plate and it's ready to go like he works on vinyl as fast as i can do on cdjs and it's 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 weird it's nuts so i might try to pull a little bit of the anger <laughs> from that stuff So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this really far back in the mix and see if I can't 
get a little noise floor going to help me fill up my sound. That might be a good uh, 16 in sound. So I'll do that. Man, that goes on forever. What's this sound? I think I was gonna layer this with a snare. Cool. Could go on a little longer. Let's put those in there and then burb them out. So let's give them their own channel. At most two. Sometimes I'll use a long verb and then other times, um, I mean, I've put a side chain on a reverb before. And the, another thing that I've also done, not that these are things that we need to do now, this is, I'm just like thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. I've also done where I've kind of like, I want a reverb to be like almost like a delay. So I'll, I'll actually have a reverb into a delay. The mm. reverb will have kind of a shorter attack. So it's kind of like it does the reverb, but then it pulses away like. Bah, bah, bah. That's cool. That makes. Yeah. Because sometimes, yeah, I've, I've found that when you really want to extend a sample, sometimes reverb just doesn't work. And like reverb two isn't great, but like I'll, I'll end up using a delay instead of a verb and just pretending it's a verb. They're kind of the oh, same totally. thing. Yeah. No, they're interchangeable, I think, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the settings. I even have a few reverbs that have delays, like delay convolutions built in, so the, the sound will come in and out almost like a delay. What? Decided not to make any noise. Did I not put that on the right channel? I did not. That would explain it. Obvious. It's just going to be the district song. I threw in a bunch of, uh, ambient sounds and effects in that pack too sweet i will grab one. Oh shit marvy in the house what's up marvy just hang <laughs> just hanging out making some tunas shout out to everybody who thinks this is interesting real producers in the house yeah, this is the producer's producer show. <laughs> Heard one more thing I want to add. Sure, I'm going to make that work. Or this one. It wouldn't be a nostalgia tune if I didn't add turntable stops somewhere. What do you use for that? Are you Mac or PC? Like, uh, I'm on Mac. Ah, so D Blue has a sweet turntable stop. Everybody is envious of my turntable, stop. and it's free. Yeah, no, I've. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I've heard them before, and I they are some good turntable stops. <laughs> Uh, how did, how was I going to so mean section back to our a and then I was going to have the faller come in here really quietly turntable stop. Okay. Nice. If 
I can find a way to make fun of myself and pr- prior music that I've written in this, that would be a bonus. We'll see. <laughs> this a little volume envelope come on now this might not be a good idea but i'm gonna try it kind of cool i think it fades There it is. <laughs> I really like that long sound. back on well mm-hmm. wrong one wait mm-hmm. there we go mm-hmm. wonder what that would feel like I mean, that works. Like, going up to that high register works, but it's like a quick part of the lick, I think. I've done that before. I go from up, and then I dip back down. Like, you could definitely have one go up, and then the others stay down. And by one and the others, I mean, like, one section of the loop, and then the other ones. Especially the second time around. So make unique. Well, I think I'm going to do that in 32, though, actually, because I think I'll drop the drums and have it come in from high. That'd be cool. Yeah. I got to fix this one because I did that on accident. My bad. You also gave me a uh, really cool top beat sort of shuffle sound that I want to check out. I don't know. If yeah, there's a couple of little fills uh, for percussion that would be good. Um, I mean, they could get monotonous if they're on a loop, but if they get brought in and out sparsely, they could really add some groove. There's some bongos and congos, hi-hats, um, some other weird clicky, clicky stuff. There is. Yeah, that guy. I could just use that on the, the four or something. Totally. So... I'm hoping that's 140. <laughs> yeah, no, every it should be. Um. Cool. And I'm gonna fade that out myself, pretending it's a verb. Like a soul. cool
Let's mute our snare verb because we're cool. I guess I could just mute the snare channel. That would have been smarter. Dang it. Doing a rewrite. Save as. Copy. Eist. Drop the Pist. <laughs> Someone who appreciates my humor. No, got stuck. Throw back to old MIDI. Sometimes I worry about making subnotes too short because the speaker won't be able to articulate that fast. Um, I don't know. I've heard some pretty short, quick subs. They're usually pretty, pretty accurate, but it comes back down to the dynamics. Does, does it come through enough that you can enjoy it or is it too quick to feel? I decided it wasn't heavy enough, so I tried to make it heavier. <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> I'm just VIPing this tune really quick. We're we're getting there, man. This is sounding really good. Yay! I have an idea. It might be terrible. Um, uh, I'll be right back. Two minutes. Cool. chat.
gonna be so cool. No. All right, I'm back. Yo. So we're making jump up now. Oh, okay. JK. Hopefully you like these changes, though. So I'm going up a fifth. Bum. Bum. A, no, A flat. And then I need to make those legato. Hopefully that will sound good. Okay. Let's listen. I'll look at the chat while I'm listening. Kind of cool. Yeah, I think the one thing that I would change about any of this is that riser that comes down. I think you can replace that with one of the ambient or drone sounds that I put in the pack. Because I don't know, I just I'm not a fan of that drop. It kind of <laughs> sounds like a trap trap riser. Yeah, I was trying to make it work. All right, let me look. No, I think I think the timing of it and the vinyl drop of it is good. But instead of being a drop down, it could literally just be like an ambient breath or drone or something like i feel like the potential to make it unique is there where there that's what that's what i like about the dub the deep dub is that it's not so much about the white noise riser it's about what is going to be that riser mm. to make that sound well now i'm excited i could do this big symbol actually Let's just yeah that could that work in. too just like yeah i think it's just like it's it's the it's the staying away from like the super synthy risers and falls that help the deep tunes. Let's audition this guy. I'm also gonna change this last part, I think. Nah. How about that one? Possibly. Yeah, see, like, even that, like, just, it doesn't even have to be a rise as much as just a transition sound, something that comes in to fill right before the next start of the loop. Ooh, ooh! Sorry, I got an idea. Got a raging clue. A clue? <laughs> All right, I'm going to resample that. Stupid. There's a threshold on the recorder for Edison, and sometimes that doesn't help. Okay. Record. Like a built in noise gate? Yeah. It's for a record mode. Okay, so just because I'm going to be a good audio person, I'm going to normalize that. Save. Uh, alien TT stop rent. Delete. This is going to be cool. Probably. There you are. Put you on your own channel. Then I'm going to reverse you. 
should maybe have done a faster turntable stop. That's fine. Um, turn it way down. Let's turn it down at the sample. Doing this is also like helping me understand why I do the things that I do when making a deep track. So this is this is cool <laughs> insight for me as well. Awesome. That's really good. I'm not trying to just completely rip you off, but No, dude, I mean it's I've been ripping everybody else off, so <laughs> it keeps going. Got to learn from somewhere. The rip circle. Okay. That's kind of cool. I wanted to come back up faster. Louder. A little faster. Nice. There we go. I'm I'm digging the idea. Yeah, that's coming in nicely. So now it's gonna do a kind of infinite verb sort of thing. We'll see about those settings in a second. We're gonna automate the wet knob. <laughs> I'm gonna rewatch the stream and check out my producer posture. <laughs> I am at my standing desk though, so. That's got to been standing this whole time. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm totally lounged. <laughs> so the sounds actually going to cut, I think, here, and it's just going to be verb. Let's go switch. Copy. Yes. Louder. Maybe I'll let nice. it. Nice. It's getting there. Oh, that's really cool. Let's pick up the beat on this. Um, you gave me a a shaker, right? Yeah, here's one. It's a little stereo. It's fine. Yeah, it's super like Haas Haas effect. Yes, <laughs> I'm Okay, so I kind of am feeling about doing like a, you know, in that tune goodbye that I think I sent you. Um, kind of thinking something like that with a, an, a cymbal or a hi-hat that's kind of out rhythmically. Let's see. God, my hi-hats suck. Um. Dude, all hi hats suck. They do. <laughs> you like hi hats take so much processing. Uh, I'll try this. Give that swing. Now we're talking.
So what would you do Deep. for what would you do for a sub base like that? Because I feel like it needs something on top of it. Um, I linked in uh, or in the ch in the pack. Let me see what they're called. Shout out to everybody. Uh, at that point, I would I would be uh, there's a there's a couple of things called there's one called wood base for resample and one called wood base riff. But basically what I would do at this point is um, either get a long kind of droney mid bass to fit that because you can add pretty mean mid basses and keep it sparse and it'll still maintain like the darkness and the depth. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just about at this point, like it could be a long sweeping mid, it could be like a short quick burst with some reverb or something. Um, there's, there's a few possibilities. Yeah, okay. I like this one. I have an idea. Okay, so I'm going to put a mid-bass in and then kind of verb it. So I'm going to do mid-bass on the first down hit, verb carrying for the second, mid-bass on the third, and so on, and see what happens. Uh... Probably going to throw this in armor image synthesis, but we'll see. Get on your channel. Huh. That worked too easily. <laughs> Oops. Nice. Happy accidents. <laughs> it could even be pushed back further. Uh like not not in terms of bars or beats, but in terms of like lagging the sample of the mid bass even more. I think it would give it some more groove or sure maybe even a little bit further back let me try this It's maybe too far. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's your choice. It's like it, it's like a, a creative choice at this point where the where the womp comes in. The I'm womp. Womp. I'm gonna loop this. See if it feels comfortable. <laughs> Bouncy. Give myself a beat one there. Let's add
turn those guys down there. it kind of sticks out a little bit. Not sold. I think it detracts from the rest of the sub work. It's gone. We tried it. It's gone. <laughs> it's still killing me that Skype isn't giving me these low frequencies. Like I'm imagining them. <laughs> They're like it's like blue balling me with the sub bass. <laughs> that sucks. It's like yeah. no. I, I turned on the stream for a second just to make sure, and it sounds good. <laughs> oh, it sucks because that's literally the melody. So it's just yeah. those those super low ones. Yeah, uh, it's like I think it cuts everything below like fifty hertz. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch this up an octave just so you can hear what I'm working with here. Because I made a lot of changes. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> do the uh, sustain base there. And I'll do the four of this guy again. I don't know who told me this, but um, or taught me this, but so I can chop and slice up these patterns in FL and rearrange them in different things. And then there's a button here where I just join them back together. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's what I wrote. It's perfect. <laughs> right, I'm going to call this sub C or B2 or A2. Right, I'm going to play it through one more time and see what else.
What's that? Uh, do you did you give me a uh spring reverbed reggae sample that like go 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 go? Do I have one of those? Um, which one? Like a yeah, yeah, I think so. Get the Rasta sound. I almost feel like the flute is too obvious. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I threw it in there in case we were going like cheesy, easy mode. <laughs> it's just it's just true that like flute and sub sound great together. They're kind of similar. Yeah. Very <laughs> pure sounds. There's also a really long intro. Uh, it's called Scien uh, Is it Scientist? Hold on. Talking Scientist. That's like a whole speech. I have in case we voice. wanted to do like something. Ooh. Like that things are. I don't know if it'll fit, but it, it'll <laughs> line up time timing wise because it was an intro in a demo I did. It's Never impossible. ended up using it though. Quiet, scientist. You're too loud. Uh, uh, do you have your... Futon wants to know if this stream is going to be archived. I don't know if you have your archives on or not. Uh, yeah. So you can rewatch it for seven days. Um, but I will post this on our YouTube channel. Okay, cool. I will link for you now. YouTube. We need subscribers so that we can get a uh, custom uh, URL, guys. Help us out. Flute into Serum. Yeah, I could put the flute into... That's a really good idea. I'll put the flute into Harmer and like see what kind of cheese strats I can pull off. I have my theories. It's impossible to understand the things we feel, what we believe. Overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage. Those are cool effects. English words are insufficient. More than hope. A human mind in this environment is capable of extraordinary things. Well, I'll just throw that in the front as a placeholder, if nothing else. That's only 17, though. So we're going to need another 17. Yeah, no, for sure. That's not a full intro. That's a half intro. <laughs> Trying to set me up, but I was I was listening and I took notes. Okay, so all right, face. There will be a test. <laughs> Armor, where are you? There you are. You're always way too loud, so I'm gonna turn you down. Let's put that flute into this. What was it called? It's a long file. Nice armor. Whoa. Just like that. Battle horn. Yep. Let's just add a giant foghorn reverb on it. We did it. We have made it to Middle Earth. <laughs> foghorn it is. Foghorn. I want to do some granular stuff too. Uh, is that the right key? Nope. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, it's not. It's not keyed. Oh. Humming strats. Yeah, I use that too. <laughs> That actually sounds pretty good right there. 
Oh, shit. It's happened. <laughs> I'll hold my beer. I gotta record this real quick. Um, what he needs is a hi-hat. Now I'll know when to start playing. Human mind in that environment is capable of extraordinary things. Pitch it down more. One of those is usable. Gonna reset. Yeah, there was some good cuts in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bounce that <laughs> right quick. Yeah, no, I like those. Like, cause the deep ones sound good and the high ones sound good. You like, you can't lose with that sound. Um, no one's gonna be able to hear us for like a couple seconds. Okay, I hope that bounced correctly, otherwise I'll do it real time. Loot-ish. Looks right. Never sings. Yeah, I like the, the, the middle and the highest one best. That one being my favorite. Nice one, brother. Nice one, brother. <laughs> Is that like a human traffic reference? <laughs> I think so. Have you ever seen that movie? I've been uh, pretending to know what that's from for several streams. So. Oh Yeah, no, it's from this British rave movie. <laughs> it's a funny movie, but it's dated as fuck. Save. Lutish 2. Also, if you're in Edison and you're making a lot of cuts to a big file, make sure you click the scissors, undo history, and then just go back to the last time you trimmed, and then you can do this. Last time you trimmed. Suggested. All right. It's like a foghorn, a flute, and a, a didgeridoo all in one. It's cool. Just putting uh, fades on either side of the file. Normalizing, so I'm a good sound engineer. Is the stream supposed to hear anything yet, or me? Oh, crap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they can hear, right? Are they punking you? I think we're getting punked. You're getting punked. See? Where's Ashton Kutcher? <laughs> He's got to be here somewhere. Oh, they can't hear the sample I'm manipulating right now. 
Oh, they couldn't hear the sound because I didn't have it assigned to it. Yeah. Now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to cut out two more guys. All right. Johnny, Johnny is freaking out in chat. <laughs> I can't hear it. Or is he freaking out about human traffic? <laughs> uh, he's trying to tell you how to fix it. We can't hear it if it's. Yeah, yeah. It's not assigned to an FX channel. Come on. <laughs> What an amateur! I'm sorry. I'm a hobbyist. Weekend weekend player. Weekend weekend streamer. Yeah. Okay. Fear not. Here come the flute sounds. They are dank. Um. Flute. Oh my. FL. There we go. I'm just going to call it flute. I'm going to get confused. All right, you want to hear it? You're going to hear it. So there, I took something nice. stereotypical and I made it less stereotypical. Totally palatable. Also, there's a chance that they never heard any of that backbeat stuff we did because I don't think I put it. Oh, did I use a different backbeat? I'll find out. Okay. Um, let me just check because that part's really cool. No, nope, no one heard it. Okay. Loop. Oops. Uh, there it is. So basically, my goal is to get a uh, a 32 that I like. That's my goal for tonight. That's a good goal to have. It's further than I usually get when I start a beat. I just want to be able to go back to it and be like, oh, yeah, I want to do that rather than just hate it. Okay. Totally. Impossible to understand the things we felt that was, believed. That was weird. Where is that low one? I'll actually come in handy here. Always take more resamples than you need because you never know. When I'm when I'm printing a bass, I usually make just use a bunch of notes. Like even if I'm not planning to use those notes in the song later, you never know. Like oh yeah, I need a second drop variation or something. It's good to have those. Yeah, I've been guilty of catching myself without enough resources. Uh, that way, mm -hmm. downsampling and then realizing that I don't have the the version right before. <laughs> no me gusta. It's impossible to understand the things we felt, what we believed, the overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage. English birds are insufficient. More than hope, a human mind in that environment is capable yeah, I need to stretch that guy. of extraordinary things. It still sounds like a flute. Whatever. You know what? No, but it doesn't it doesn't sound like a Native American flute. Now it sounds kind of like it's more Middle Earthy because you added that, I don't know, ring shifting or pitch shifting or whatever. Essentially, yeah. Quote. I'm digging this though. This sounds good. Wait. A <laughs> drying cow. <laughs> Why was it wet, Korat? Uh, excuse me, Korat. Korat. I've been pronouncing your name wrong for weeks now. 
It's really Korat? It's My bad. Korat, yeah. It's a cat species, apparently. Oh. Y'all should be able to hear the backbeat little thing that comes in here now. There it was. Yep. Something there. I like that a lot. I bet I could make something like that. Science quote. We're doing good, guys. I successfully don't hate this. Of extraordinary things. <laughs> All right. That isn't that cool. More than hope. What we believe. I have my theories. It's impossible a, to understand. That's a good one. Yeah, that I have my. The, theories. I have my theories. Yeah. <laughs> Serif Dub says, "I success I successfully don't hate this." I guess we're doing all right then. <laughs> <laughs> Serif, th if this was if this was a song that you heard uh, at a show, would you think that this was a nostalgia tune? Because <laughs> this this is like new territory right now. That's true. I really haven't put any of my. I mean, there's a little bit I think coming through, but not enough. Oh no, dude! I'm I'm here. Like I would have not like with these sounds, which were both. I mean, the sounds that you're using, I'm saying, is something that I would totally use. But the way you're putting this together is completely different than I would. And I think it's sounding cooler. Just because I'm so sick of my own style, like hearing <laughs> somebody else put together these sounds, it sounds like really cool. So this is refreshing. I have my theories. Uh, what does it say? Never six. It's capable. I need a good... A uh, vowel. It's a good vowel. Bingo. Cut. Normalize. Save. Human mind. Oh, I should save this in... Uh, Save. Okay. Fingers crossed that this is cool. We're going to go ahead and put a granulizer on the track here. Is that something you find yourself using? Uh, Reason doesn't have very good granular synthesis, but there's, there's a few delays and stuff that I use. I, also, I, I think that the chat and I can't hear anymore what you're doing. Fools. Um, yeah, I'm not. I was doing a bunch of editing that didn't make any noise yet. So you should be able to hear me play this synth in a second here that says human mind. Right now. Yeah, I heard that. A human mind in that environment. A human mind. A human mind. In, a human mind in that environment. A human mind in that environment. Yeah. A human mind in the Doing it. Okay. A, a, a human a human Brand new. A human a human a human mind in this environment. I need to use this thing more often. It's cool. A, a, a human So beat two or beat a, and a half. A, a, And then it will sustain forever. And I have my theories. I have my theories. A human mind in this environment. I have my theories. A human. So we're going to take this and we are going to automate it.
for better or for worse. Right there. I don't know which direction is which. I guess I want to go this way. Correct. Okay. I actually haven't done this before, I don't think. I'm kind of watching everything on a 10 second delay, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what you're I'm trying to make him say a human ma. Yeah. That's right. I go backwards if I go too far. It's kind of cool. A human mind. A human mind. A human mind. I go crazy with these guys. A human mind. Oh, that's what that is. A human mind. Neat. How are you holding up? I'm doing pretty good for now. I'm I'm chatting with chat, and I'm also uh, working on a flyer for. I'm doing a 12 hour stream on Sunday. What? Yeah, it's gonna be from like noon to midnight, and it's gonna be just like a whole mess of different things. That's sweet. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I've had people subscribed for over a year, and. I feel like I could always stream more, and now that I have the opportunity to at my house, I'm going to take advantage. Well, good. Then I don't feel like I'm holding you up too much. Oh, no. No. I'm I'm good for another, like, half hour. Uh, but then I got to go make some late food for my lady and I. Yeah, I'm, I'm at about that point. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to add delay to this. Assuming mind. Only it's going to be a quarter note delay. And it will be infinite until I tell it not to be. Man, this is a lot of automation for one little effect. Do you ever do those like reverse reverbs where you cut the first uh, like couple of milliseconds of the sample, you put a really long reverb on it, at 100% like wetness, then you downsample it and you reverse it. So kind of like the the reverb reverses into uh into the vocal. Mm -hmm. it took me the longest yeah, time to figure point. out how to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's like a simple thing, but you, it's such a pain in the ass to do it because like there's so many steps along the way. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we should do it. I was just Marvy was talking about uh, dissolving into reverb with the human mind vocal. Mm. So I'm just trying to see what he means. Yeah, reverse reverb is really sick. It's a great effect. It's a reason people use it a lot. A human mind. Okay, I'll be right back in two minutes. My cat is back at the door. He's going to make sure she has food. Okay. A human mind. Oh, yep, that's going to go on forever. That's it is. A human mind. A 
human mind. Oh, why didn't I just do that? Uh, <laughs> whatever. A human mind. Yeah, that was stupid. So the effect I wanted to get, I could have just done with gross beats, sort of a gate. And I'll, maybe I will verb it out, but I think I'm gonna do a gate as well. That's too fast. Do I not have, I'll just do this. All right, I'm back. Sorry. Oh. A human mind. Oh, this automation looks like a watermelon. <laughs> That's cool. As long as, you, as long as your automations and your songs look cool, they'll probably sound good. Exactly. I am going to add reverb to that. And then I'm going to stop working on that stupid effect. A human mind. Cool. Coolest sound ever, 2016. Nostalgia. It's gonna go up here and then it's gonna be done. A human mind. Yeah, we'll see. Last thing. Compression. A human mind. A human mind. A human mind. From the top. I'm burning out. All right. I have my theories. It's impossible to understand the things we felt, what we believed, the overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage. English words are insufficient. More than hope, a human mind in that environment is capable of extraordinary things. I think we did good work here. I'm gonna copy and loop this real quick just because I have one last idea. I think that human mind thing actually worked out and I like that 16 in, we have uh, something other than the flute, but something that, something has to function as the flute, but not be the flute. Right. So. Uh, uh, I I did link in that in that pack a couple of other random ambient sounds and alien signals, just kind of sounds that are sound good when like delayed out and stuff. But um, of course, your choice. You can can dig anywhere. Uh, I 
I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna go towards the drones and stay away from the mid base. I think. Ooh, it's a really cool sound. Alien signal too. I'm feeling it. Yeah, it's got kind of that radio feel to it. I like that a lot. I can just hear my wife walking around waiting for me to be done streaming. <laughs> yeah, can relate. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect uh, loudness. I have my theories. A human mind. Ten bucks says I should resample that, but I'm not going to right now. Sweet. Happy accident. Dude, I think we are ready to just listen and set it down. That makes me happy. All right. All right, stream. This will be our last listen. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, dude, this is cool. Yeah, dude. This thanks was, for helping uh, me out. Considering. Considering we both didn't really know what we were gonna do, it kind of worked out. But sometimes you just gotta you just gotta dive in and try. Yeah, I knew the end result was I might have a really cool deep tune, so it was worth trying. Um, nice. All right, thank y'all for tuning in. We have tons of millions of shows on Redline, and then click on the Whittler's name if you don't already know that he streams all the time, and he's planning that twelve-hour stream, which will be sick. Um, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna close off Skype so I can listen to the track through the stream and get the full full sub bass experience. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks a lot, dude. We'll be All in right. touch. Yeah, man. Thank you again. Have a good one. All right. All right. You heard the Skype hang up sound. All right. I have my theories. It's impossible to understand. The things we felt, what we believed, the overwhelming fear, ecstatic rage. English birds are insufficient. More than hope, a human mind in that environment is capable of extraordinary things. <laughs>